We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. It is an absolute gorgeous day here in Las Vegas, Nevada. No matter where you're at in the world, you are live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. All the best and the latest and greatest in music, sports, entertainment, reality TV, film, and great conversations and talk and more. We've got today, we did a blast out, Christina, my award-winning assistant, let me know that the reviews are in and we got a really good turnout. We've got Rashad Mati. And I promise I was not going to fuck up his last name. And we're going to be having him on because it's all about getting it right. He is known as the Albanian Bear. 14 wins, zero losses, hailing out of New York City. Professional kickboxer and more. Rashad, welcome to Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Thank you for having me. Hey, we're going to have more of you on here. And once so everyone knows you and I had this conversation before we went live, it's very important to yeah. know how to pronunciate. And and I get it. You know, sometimes you don't correct, but it's Mati. Yes. Yes. Um, even my first name, I usually just tend to be, uh, tell people, you know what, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how you doing? It's Rashad. Yes. See? See, I'm getting, even with my Jersey accent, I'm getting it. <laughs> We're not that far away. I'm right across the, the, the Gotham's Bridge. So. Uh, your official Instagram is official, Rashat Mati. Uh, yes, that's uh, R-E-S-H-A-T-M-A-T-I. You, your yes, birthday, sir. you just had a birthday, 25 years old. I did, I did. Um, I'm getting old now, so that's it. Just, I remember the other day, I just turned 18, so now I feel like I'm... <laughs> Time's flying. <laughs> I found out from you, uh, you know, from an Instagram story post from our mutual friend, Nikita Ababi. He was just out here in Vegas. It was great having time spent with him. I uh, tried to get some good photos. Uh, I'm not uh, used to not using a flash, even though I've covered a lot of UFC events. <laughs> and uh, it was a day that I forgot my flash and I was trying to work with that hideous fluorescent light that they have in those gyms <laughs> out there and it just didn't work. So the next time I see him, uh, we're going to have some really uh, much better photos that's going to be had. Uh, what's up Absolutely. for you for the rest of the year? What's going on? Uh, right now, we're just trying to figure out what's going on with, uh, you know, the fight schedules and, uh, you know, most likely we're really fighting again early, uh, early to mid-December. So that, that's the target goals. But in this sport, you're never 100. percent So it just you kind of have your fingers crossed, and hopefully, events pull through, opponents get uh, set, and then you know cut the weight and get ready to fight. It's going to be out of New York, right? Uh no. It's I believe it's going to be towards the West Coast. I think uh, I'm 100 percent sure, but it might be either Arizona or Va- uh, I'm sorry, Arizona or San uh, San Diego. Okay. You ever plan on getting out here in Vegas at all? I actually fought in Vegas um, a little bit after the COVID uh, was ending, and they started taking off the mask and everything like that. So um, I forgot which one it was. I think it was May 2021. Oh wow! Okay, that was the last time I was in Vegas. So it was uh, my first time, and I, I would definitely come back to Vegas and, and fight there again. Yeah, they're starting to do a lot more fights. I've been finding out in uh, in Texas, Arizona. Uh, back in California a bit and all, but hey. Oh yeah, I mean, good. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of shows that are here and there. It, it just depends on who's fighting the main card, um, how they're going to be selling tickets, and then pretty much they want to pick it. They want to target the the main uh, the main uh, crowds, you know. So just uh, if you have a good fight person that can sell tickets and do all that stuff, uh, they're going to put it in that, that direction. All right, we, I want to clarify something up here. <clears throat> so it was on the boxing scene. I don't know if you saw this at all. 
They said that you were fueled by lack of attention. Keep in mind, we're not doing, we don't do sensational journalism. But what I like to know is when we do interviews or something, we need to get it directly from you. So it's just something that was just sent over by my assistant. And if you want to touch on, said that you were, it was fueled by lack of attention and that you aim to prove, what the fuck? Why are my allergies got to start right now? Prove doubters wrong. So what was going on here that, you know, they're coming, let's see here, um, it says you're not the most talkative fighter in the world, which is a positive thing. More times than not, you'll you'll greet with a smile, they're saying, and a playful joke. But what are they talking about? What's going on here? Like, did this come out of your mouth, or are they assuming or speculating here? Um, well, I guess to me, more speculating. Um, you know, do I feel like I've been, you know, sometimes you, you do feel like you're, you're like the red-headed, red-headed stepchild, you know, and you kind of you be left out sometimes, or they kind of put you on cards that are not very – um, you know, attracted to fight on, you know, so it kind of, uh, and I, I, they put me on some cards that were, you know, very unattractive to be on, you know, fighting in Mexico city, which a lot of fights that, you know, a lot of other prospects wouldn't fight on, um, you know, Mexico city was a fight that they announced two weeks before I fought and the altitude was 9,000 feet. And they're telling you, listen, just, you know, get the fight going and, my opponent ended up pulling out. I took a guy that, that was living there that was used to the altitude and we fought and it was definitely a rough fight. And, um, I was definitely upset after that fight. I was very upset. And they were just telling me like, Oh, um, you know, just move on for a minute and, and, you know, go ahead. But if you don't get a stoppage in this boxing world, you know, win by knockout, you know, people tend not to like take, you know, excuse my language, but give a shit about you. So it's a, it's a, it's a rough sport to be in. Um, you have to look impressive 24 seven and, uh, you know, you have one little mess up and you're, you're kind of screwed. Mm. Well, and here's the thing. And with all due respect to promoters and all those that are doing their job, I, I get it. What I appreciate is, uh, Ray Cepho from PFL professional fighting league. Yeah. Uh, taught me a lot of what they look for when they're looking for professional fighters hands down though you can only do so much to get into the weight class you guys got to go through grueling extensive uh eating cutting sweating dehydrating all of these things to make class and make weight and and then you got to figure you know you want the best opponents but you've got to work with with who's not going to quit on you who's not going to cancel uh, canceling can come down to the last second. I know a, a, a bare course. knuckle fighter that was all ready to go in and the, his opponent canceled and he found out in the hallway. I found out, well, what I found out the day of the weigh-ins, I was actually going on stage to go weigh in and they told me, uh, Oh yeah, your fight got canceled. Nobody told you. I said, and this was the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> And uh, I missed out on Thanksgiving. I remember running at like, you know, 11 o'clock at night while everybody's eating. Well, you know, eating, you know, resting up a little bit, having dessert. And I'm running out just to lose my last two pounds. So it was it was definitely a rough day. And then I get there and they're saying, oh, yeah, your fight got canceled. Which, which if the fight doesn't get canceled by then, you don't get paid. You don't get a percentage. You don't get – you just they say, okay, we'll put you on another card eventually. Now, what does that do to you financially, honestly, if you're free to speak on this? What does that do to you financially when we think about uh, any dietitians, if you got them on your program, or if you don't have a, uh, a sponsor, when we look at uh, food, meal preps, coaches, uh, recovery, or physical therapists, what does that do to you? Well, I mean, uh, they usually, we usually try to work with percentages of like the fight purse. You know, um, if you make whatever money you make from there, they take a percentage of what, what you earned, which is, you know, rightfully, you know, even, you know, fair. Um, it's just the main thing for you is, uh, you know, if you don't fight and the sponsors pay, you got to return that money back. That's another thing too. You have to, you, there's a lot of stuff that, that kind of, you have to like kind of hope the fight goes through. Cause if it doesn't go through, then everything kind of goes back to, you know, how it was before and you have to return it. And a lot of waste, wasted time, a lot of weight cutting, a lot of, you know, hard work is, you know, kind of thrown on the toilet. So you have to just, you know, kind of pray that the fight goes through. And there's another thing saying, too, that you were hoping about the opponent being there and fighting, you know, to make the fight. But you got to worry about, you know, this is a job at the end of the day. You have to worry about this paying your bills. 
So you, you don't want to go taking a tough fight, and you want to fight the best, but you want to fight the best for the right money. You don't want to fight the rest for you know peanuts that are not. If you lose one fight, you know you're kind of back to start of one, and you have to go back to regular pay. So that's kind of how boxing kind of works. That's a lot of responsibility, honestly, especially to take a gamble like that when you think of financial. Of course, you know it's one little loss, and that's it. You're back to you're back to square one. So, um, you know, promotions will cut you. You know, it, it's it's a crucial business. It's a hard business. You know, that's why every fight when I go there, I'm I'm making sure that I'm 100. percent Well, I try to be 100. percent You know, every fight is gonna go in there somewhat kind of hurt to begin with because you know you're going through some sparring, you're going through a lot of running and weight cutting, and so it it, it takes, definitely takes a lot on your body. Mm-hmm. What's recovery time like for you? What it's a, what has been the best so far this year when we think of size, performance? Have you noticed a huge or has it been gradual of your own personal and professional evolution? Uh, uh, I'm, no, <laughs> I'm not a very good professional athlete, all right? When I go in, I get kind of fat afterwards. You, know, you ever watch the Patty Piblet, uh, <laughs> Patty the Batty? <laughs> no. Um, how he, how, uh, you you don't see how like how fat he gets after fights. You know he gets you know pretty oh, fat. Oh yeah 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 yeah. That, that that's pretty much I would like to say about eighty five percent of you know, well I would say like fifty half of the the boxing industry MMA industry. Uh, we tend to get a little fat afterwards. We get but not that fat, not that fat. But we tend to get a little bit higher up. Well, keep in mind you're 25. Don't let that go into your 30s and 40s because I'm going to tell you it's a, <laughs> it's a bitch to get rid of that that stubborn weight. Oh, no, I, I believe you. I know. Like When I go back to the gym, they look at me like, what are you doing? I'm like, I like to eat. What can I say? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying my food, you know. and uh, But it's to me, it's you know, I, I know when my balance comes in. When I'm in camp, I'm in camp 100%. No distractions. Just, I cut out everything. So it, I, I'm strictly into business. I'm here to do my job. And uh, so far, so good. I've been doing my job the right way. And, uh, you know, you're going to have people that are going to talk shit, excuse me, talk crap. And then uh, at the end of the day, you, your job is to win. And they can't really say anything about the, else about that. You've got great style, great fashion sense. Love in the most recent you. post. You're welcome with the bandana. Uh, it looks almost like a, a burgundy, maybe like a like a red. Like where does your fashion sense come from? Because it's it, it kind of has like a machine gun Kelly type of flair with a little bit of a um, I don't know what is that? What is that one designer? Uh, Philip Plein. It's really cool. It I go by I go by themes for each fight, you know, and uh, you know, whatever ones that I'm I'm a big like old school WWE slash WWF kind of theme uh fan. So like um I kinda go into things. Well my older fights I was doing colors and, and, and trying to do it out, but everything I do is all sketched out. I draw it out myself, I try to figure it out and uh I send it to the guy that makes the outfits and I tell him this is the way I want it, this is the material, this is the type of thing I want. Uh and he does a very good job. So um it kind of works out, but now it's just I want to do the themes. I want I want people to, to experience nostalgia, um, and experience like you know like what oh my god that you know he's kind of bringing back old school memories and good memories, and um, so far you know people have been enjoying it, and uh, Kobe was my best time because I was actually having a good time making these outfits. I was going out with Batman, uh, Superman, and I was coming out to some crazy songs, and you know I, I come out there to to make sure that people are again you know. Their money's worth when it comes to my fights. How long are you going to be keeping the blonde hair? Uh, not very long. Actually, the hair is kind of going away. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm gonna, you know, buzz my hair again. Uh, go back to brown, and then just, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, if people want me to dye it again, I'll probably dye it again. But uh, thank God I have a plug for that. My fiance does my hair, so uh, it kind of works out. For what it's worth, I dig it. Thank you. I, I enjoy it. Uh, cause it's a little bit different, you know, seeing your hair brown for 25 years, you, it's like, you know, you get kind of bored of it and you want to change it up. I, I'm going to honestly say I'm not comparing you to Sean o O'Malley. I'm just going to say that I believe that you have a way about you and understanding who you are and what you're about to where I wouldn't doubt if someone were to ever one day compare your look, your style and your vibe in kind of like a remembrance of him or, or a, um, 
some type of identity. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I've always been a person that's kind of like, I, I want to be kind of set aside from everybody else. I don't want to be kind of like, well, it is a sort of flattery because, you know, people enjoy his, his personality and stuff like that. I have nothing against Sean O'Malley. Um, but, you know, lately he's been talking a little too much, you know, nonsense about he wins one fight against an MMA fighter that's a jiu-jitsu artist. Now he's, he, can, he can sit with the big boys in boxing. So um, we'll see who, who – if he wants to fight down in boxing, we can get it going and we'll see who has the best outfit and the best hair. So mm-hmm. uh, we can get it going. Well, I mean, I don't mind putting it on record because, you know, the UFC probably knows or whatever. But the the thing of it is, is I offered to his team and uh, it came by recognition or not recognition, uh, recommendation is I already reached out to his team to let him know I would represent him. And a lot of times in this, these guys don't have proper PR. You know, the UFC, a lot of, of these organizations, they their PR is their fiduciary, judiciary, financial, legal responsibility is to the uh, is to the organization Uh, but a lot of times when you see especially in sports even in your arena is that promoters and um, managers should not be handling the PR I don't give a shit uh, what the organization's doing the organization is there to protect themselves and do what they need to do I respect it I understand it you guys all know it but the fact of it is is that you as a, as a, a professional athlete, you guys as professional athletes need more guidance in addition and outside for you and your business because this is your business. So for what it's worth, yeah. I just want to share that with you that a lot of the stuff that comes out, stuff that should not be coming out, stuff that maybe should sat and be discussed um, is – People in MMA, uh, most of the time sports and boxing and even bare knuckle, don't have the professional guidance outside of the organizations to know how to handle and deal with not only uh, outside media, but also the, the discrepancies that can come because the fact of it is, is we're talking about your paychecks. We're talking about your life, your reputation. You may perform and uh, be activated for a fight three, four, five, however many times you, you can do it. I know UFC fighters like to get at yeah. least four fights in a year. And then the thing of it is, is, you know, you got people like with this, this one article that was came out about you that can affect your reputation. And even what you shared with about Sean O'Malley is then, well, what does that mean for you personally and professionally? You guys got families. Like you said, you've got your girlfriend, you've got family. And, you know, these are all things that I want to say thank you for touching upon um, that I highly um, advocate for is for you guys not to have to be alone in this business and to be treated as only a betting ticket because you're more than just a bet. You're a human being and you you need to build a business here and you don't need adversaries that are trying to keep fucking things up for you. Oh, at the end of the day, when when you're here, everybody wants their piece of the pie, which I understand. Everybody's doing their job. Um, I'm a person that's like a kind of an open book. I, I I tell it like it is. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people are, why do you have to tell this? Don't why do you have to tell people that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't give a shit. I don't I don't care honestly. Um, in this game, you're kind of like a pawn. You're you're going there to do your job and and move on. Um. Do you go and, and talk down and sit down and see how you're doing? Nobody really checks up on me unless I'm fighting. No one cares. But, you know, when you're fighting, they'll see you and, hey, oh, my God, you know, I've been with you since day one. Where were you when I had my nose surgery, my shoulder surgery? No one was there to be found. So this is a crucial business, and this is a crucial word. When you're not involved, nobody cares. It's mm-hmm. like that movie The Bronx Tale. You know, when Sonny was uh, – you ever watched that movie Bronx Tale? I, yes, I did, twice. And, and Sonny, I watched it a lot of times. And at the end of the day, you know, Sonny was right. Nobody cares. Um, and that's the kind of motive. That's kind of how the thing you have to you keep in mind that no, you have to do your thing. Everybody has their problems, so you gotta have to move on and, and then kind of focus on that. Help your family and, and do what's best for you and your family and the people that you love. Hey, you closed the show right there. <laughs> it's seriously. I'm, I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm. I'm trying, you know, I, I just, like I said, I keep everything 100%, you know, I, and there's no reason for me to, you know, 
make some garbage up or, you know, I'm just here to do my job, you know, try to be successful with the things I'm doing, which I sacrificed my whole life to do. And, uh, you know, God willing, it will pay off, you know, and at the end of the day, it's, you got to do what's best for you. Do you believe things are going to get better or are they getting better from your professional viewpoint to where you're finding that there are better and more possibilities of people caring, uh, coming to the table to be a support system for you without expectation? Where do you see improvements or are there improvements that are happening in the industry? Yeah, it, it's tough to say because um, – you, you 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 would think somebody would care, you know, you, you'll have people go on to you and people that you haven't, you know, they don't check up on you or anything like that. They'll be like, Oh, I love you. And stuff like that. My brother. Did. And then when, when stuff kind of hits the fan, you know, where are they? You know, they're nowhere to be found. Uh, so it, it, it really is tough to, to kind of figure out who's there in your inner circle uh, that they truly cares for you and who doesn't, you know? So, but in the meantime, it, I have to worry about me. You know, and, and what would be better for me, my family, my, you know, people that I love for. Um, and, you know, just kind of, you know, go towards that, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I like to say I'm relatively religious and, you know, I believe that whatever God has in store for me, it's going to happen. If and no, no if ands or buts. So it's whatever happens, it, it's God's rod for me and uh, it, it is what it is. It, it, that's what my cards were dealt and, you know, you got to kind of, deal with it reading and looking back and i appreciate that uh the los angeles times back here in 2013 oh. the friendly 14 year old from Staten island is a fierce boxing and martial arts competitor after numerous bouts and amateur titles he's gained international notice and an internet following you've advanced a lot since then, but even then you oh, seem yeah. to have been very, very laser focused. And I'm glad you brought up about faith and, uh, you know, your belief and it, it emulates, it resonates through you. Yeah. I'm, I, I've been doing this all my life. A lot of people don't realize this, you know, well, the people that, you know, I've been around my family, my relatives, they've known how bad and how, how focused I've won that and all the stuff that I've dealt with all my life. Um, you know, thank God for my father. Thank God for my mother that had been through my side the whole time. My dad's one of my coaches. Um, you know, so it, it's kind of been, you know, in the family. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. I had that prodigy video on YouTube that went crazy viral. Um, that was something that I kind of regret because I never opened up a social media account around that time and, you know, never took advantage of that, that publicity, you know, but uh, definitely put a target on my back because everybody was like, I want to fight him. You know, you know, I got a bunch of death threats and it was crazy. I'm a 13 year old kid getting death threats by grown men. It was insane. Wow. Well, you're making your, your claim to fame, but more importantly, you're making a clear understanding as to who you are and that's where it begins and, and that's where it ends. Because if you take on anything else, especially outside of yourself and taking care of yourself and your and being there as a support system for your family and for them to be available and there for you, uh, someone's going to mess something up for you. You know, that's why you have to keep with the... Um keep with the, the inner circle. You know, you, wanna, you don't want to overstep and invite too many people into the inner circle because... People are, are waiting for your opportunity to slip up. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm a God-fearing man. You know, I have, I have uh, you know, whatever's in store for him, for me, that is in his mind. You know, he has everything set up already. So if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. No ifs, ands, or buts. You know, so I just got to say, listen, you know, God had this plans for me and the uh, time to move on and, and kind of grow around it. Um but in the meantime, you know, I'm trying to have a good time, you know, enjoy life and, uh, you know, beat people up. <laughs> and so that's, that's, that's the, that's the goal. You know, I'm having a good time doing it in the meantime. And then, uh, you know, they always say, you know, you want to be a hero of the guys, you know, and it's, it's not bad to be a villain here and there. You know, it's a, one of my favorite characters is the Joker. So mm. he always got a smile on his face. But you never know what his next reaction is going to do. You know, you don't know what he's going to do. So 
you know, you never know what's going to happen. Your father once replied uh, here in the Los Angeles Times that he had said he started to see the rewards. That's what drives him. Is it still the same to this day? Of course, you know, but you now it's, it's a little bit different with, you know, back as an amateur and now as a pro. You know, back then was, you know, you win a title, you know, it was a good feeling. Now they're just giving out titles just to have a title. You know, the main title now is, you know, not having to, you know, worry about, you know, your paycheck and then have to fight with people to be like, listen, is, is this enough to be able to pay for, you know, actual bills? Um, so it just the main thing now is, you know, to be have the big fights. I, I have no doubt. And I've told everybody this. I'm interested in all the big fights. I want to be on top. Um, but the money has to be involved also. That's a big factor into this game. You know, it's, it's not like we're doing this for free anymore. This is a, this is a business and this is a job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in order for me to, you know, say that I'm, I'm achieving is to, to, to I want to achieve financially as well in this sport. So I'm seeing all these guys like Canelo Alvarez getting paid $50 million a fight. You know, um, you know, you, you want a little taste of that. So I'm just waiting for my time to strike. Well, you will continue in your twenty. Your twenty-five. You started a brand new 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 year for you. You know, you get two new years: one on January first, and then your birthday. Right, that's it. That's it. <laughs> it's, 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 mine, mine's you know not too far away, so I have that little four month gap. So <laughs> that three month gap, three four month gap. So it's in between. What inspires you the most about life? that makes you want to get up every day feeling thankful? Um, you know, mainly just my, my family. Um, you know, if, if people that know me know that, you know, my family has sacrificed a lot to help me. Um, at the end of the day, it's just, you know, yeah, I have my nieces and my nephews that I love to death. Um, that's what motivates me to be the best I can be, you know, going in, looking at that, you know, um, and, you know, just overall making my family proud of me and, 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 you know, just trying to be supportive. And also, I'm Albanian. That job hasn't been done yet to be a world champion coming out of Albania. So, there's never been an Albanian world champion. That's been my goal since the beginning. And, uh, you know, I believe that I could become the, the first ever Albanian world champion. And that, that's been in my mind. And it, it keeps me up at night knowing that, you know, I haven't done the job yet. And, you know, my job is to get it done. I believe you will. You already are. No matter how many wins you get, no matter what titles you you have, just know you're moving in the right direction. If anything and everything from this interview and, and having the opportunity from the conversations that we've had is you're moving in the right direction and you can set goals. But remember, Absolutely. There's a difference between being, and I just had this conversation with someone who I was interviewing today. There's a difference between being proactive and chasing. You can be productively proactive and go after what you believe in. Chasing something leaves a lot of room for vulnerabilities and mishaps. And for you, you're going to continue to be productive, proactive, persistent. And I'm very, very excited for not only what you're doing for yourself and how you're accomplishing now, in addition yeah. of what you're going to continue to do for yourself in the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm here to be the best I can be. And, you know, like I said, in my thing, I was saying before, whatever God's giving me, you know, I'm, I'm more than welcome to being okay with it. And uh, it's meant to be. Whatever is meant to be, it's meant to be. So, I'm here to best be, be the best I could be, and uh, whatever happens, happens, and uh, you know, be the best man I could be. That's pretty much all that you know. It's the same thing, but you got to keep it going. That's right. Well, you know, I'm always here as a support system for you. I told you that Absolutely. before. I'm I appreciate gonna, it. I'm going to put it on record again. You're more, you're very welcome, and that's the biggest thing that I want to see change and elevate you know, in the arena of sports is for people to realize that no matter who you are and what you're doing, as long as someone makes it very clear that their intentions are genuine and good and in the best interest for others, let them have the room, let them have the space, let them have the mic, let them have the opportunity to help that other person and to be a facilitator and a mentor, 
uh, all the above for them. And that's what I hope for you. Absolutely. Thank you. You know what? We're here to help each other out at the end of the day. Um, there's, there shouldn't be anything competition wise and listen, I'm better. This is better. There should be a room where it's everybody should help out one another. You know, it's, there's no, no greed, no nothing like that. So, you know, you got to make the best you can be and uh, be a nice person at the end of the day, which that, that's always been a mindset of mine and um, do what you have to do. I appreciate that. Any closing thoughts? Um, you know, not really just, you know, be nice to one each other, be nice to each other and uh, live your life as much as you can. Cause you never know when to last. So, um, and to wish everybody a, a safety and, um, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, any, uh, any shout outs, any word of, uh, praise to anyone that's most important to you in your life? Of course, you know, I have my parents that are, um, you know, my mom, my dad, you know, my sisters, my brother-in-law, my nieces and my nephews, and then my fiance. Um, you know, I love them to death. You know, I'm grateful to have them in my life and, uh, you know, I'm trying to make them proud. Oh, I guarantee you they already are. And from the article and what I read from back then of how your father expressed his passion and his belief in you, you're going to continue to have golden angels always around you. God willing. God willing. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you to everyone who's joined us today. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. We will re-air this episode, so definitely check the schedule, whether it be on the iOS or Android app or on power985.com. Also, if you got any comments or any suggestions or want to share the love, click the bottom right-hand icon in the right-hand corner um, on the app or on the website and send us your message 24-7. Myself or someone from my team will contact you. Uh, don't forget, you can call the studio line. Uh, double check that on the contact page as well. And wow, Rashad Mahdi, impressive. Head on over to his Instagram. And that is official Rashad Mahdi, O-F-F-I-C-I-A-L-R-E-S-H-A-T-M-A-T-I. Brand new episode of Let Me Tell You What Lady T airs tomorrow live 4 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.